Welcome everybody to another exciting episode of Home Kid Insider. You've got me, your host as always, Andrew O'Hara. Hope all of you are doing great this week. Hope it is a wonderful, beautiful, you know, morning, midday, afternoon, evening, whenever you are relaxing, listening to the podcast, on your drive to work, whatever it is. It's going to be a great day. I know it. Well, we have a lot of news to talk about this week. If you guys have been following the smart home news stuff at all, because that's the, the biggest stuff that happened last week, you know what I'm talking about, and we're going to come back to it. So unfortunately, riding solo again this week, we had a last-minute cancellation because the schedules are, are crazy. But I am very excited to tease our next guest on the podcast, and we're going to get there in the latter half of this episode. So starting off with a few updates out of the Apple camp. Um, Apple had a, a big week for things, right? There was updates coming out. So we had the new version of TVOS drop, TVOS 18.2. And now this is still in beta phase. So it's a first beta of 18.2. And there's still nothing really to see. But of course, some code sleuthing has gone on uh, to reveal that the new update will include the wallpapers that Apple has neglected to give us yet. This, this has been expected. Apple said these were coming by year's end, and it, it makes sense that 18.2 is going to be the vehicle to deliver them. If you are not familiar with these, Apple has several new wallpaper screensaver things coming out that are, are a little bit different than what it's done now. Right now, it's really focused on those aerials. We got, well, they're, they're still called, quote, aerials, but there's like underwater ones, space ones, city ones, landscape ones, a whole bunch of really cool, awesome aerials. Well, now we have ones coming for Snoopy. Yeah, more Snoopy themed. There is one for music, I believe, uh, that does something. And then there's a TV and uh, movies one that's all tied into Apple TV+. Plus. Apple didn't deliver this with TVOS 18. We knew it wasn't going to be in that first build. Thought it would be out in TVOS 18.1, but no. So TVOS 18.2, it is likely the beginning of December, like that first week of December is where we should see these. Next up, we have Vision OS 2.2, again, in beta alongside 18.2. Uh, so Vision OS 2.2, what's unique here is that if you were mirroring your Mac to your Vision Pro, there are new ultra-wide and widescreen options for your Mac. So not specifically into the smart home, but I, I really put AirPlay into that camp. AirPlay stuff can go in there, and, and Vision OS technically can be like an AirPlay receiver for things, but this is just really, really cool, and I also kind of wanted to mention it. I did a whole video breaking it down, but it's incredible. It, it's seriously amazing. It makes Vision Pro so much more useful for productivity. In my opinion, I, I really, really like it. So if you have not seen it, you're curious at all, it's really awesome to check out. I got a video demoing it up on the YouTube channel, and I'll link it in the show notes for you as well. Moving through the updates, macOS Sequoia 15.2, once more for the third time on the beta train. This thing has new screen mirroring options for Apple TV. So as long as your TV, TV is updated and your Mac, uh, Mac is updated to macOS Sequoia 15.2, you can now opt when you're mirroring to show your whole screen a single window or app, or extend your display. So this is going to have different privacy implications because you're in a boardroom or anything like that and you want to mirror something, you may not want to make sure, you know, anything that's on your screen. Obviously, notifications already were getting tailored when you're connected to an external display, but now it's going to hide the rest of your screen for you as well. So you can full-on extend your display, use it as like that second option, have different things on both, mirror just an app window, just a space, anything like that or do your whole screen. So I like that this, they're, they're doing this to make it a little bit more uh, understandable in terms of what you're showing and mirroring, so there's nothing accidental, inadvertent, anything like that going on. So some really useful updates from Apple on this Point 0.2 saga. We're not going to get into it, but 18.2 for iPhone and iPad, iOS and iPad OS, that includes more Apple intelligence features like the image generation, Genmoji, image playground, more enhancements for writing tools, all of that. So just blockbuster releases coming out here beginning of next month. So outside of Apple's updates, there is a new app that I wanted to mention. So this was sent in by, I believe, the app's developer, Avi, and I think this was very cool. So it's called Screen Canvas, and it's for the Apple TV. 
So I've gone to a bunch of different enterprise things for iOS, and iPhone, iPad, all that. And there actually has been a really cool utilization for Apple TVs. And we see them getting used in hotels a bunch, and hospitals, those are becoming more and more common. But another uh, little known use case is for signage, for digital signage. And there are apps that do this. You can have a whole MDM solution on board a bunch of Apple TVs and use them for intelligent signage connected to TVs over HDMI. I've actually done this. I've implemented this in an actual business to run like a lobby TV with rotating information and stuff on it, and it works really well. Well, this is a new way using this screen canvas for Apple TV app for basically anyone to do this. It doesn't require any special software, no MDM stuff, no design skills. It's just a super easy way to turn an Apple TV connected display into a digital sign. So you can promote... Uh, you know, slides for a business, you know, sales, anything. If it's an office, you could do hours, whatever it is you need to display. If you've just ever had a TV or a screen, a projector, that you're like, man, I wish I could just turn this into a sign for a minute for whatever it is or for a longer period of time. You don't want to worry about the skills needed to do that. This is the way to do it. It has a whole designer in there where you can pick backgrounds and text to do stuff really easily, or you can pull in your images any way you want that you've designed elsewhere. You jumped into Canva and actually did something super fancy, pull them in, use them this way well. But I was pretty impressed with it as far as a really easy get going app that anyone can use to turn their Apple TV into digital signs. So check it out. Screen Canvas for Apple TV. Lastly, kind of summing up from last week's episode, that'll be our nice transition here, is this was sent in by Sioban, uh, probably pronouncing it incorrectly, but thank you for sending this over. It's a list, and it's a list on the CSA website that gives you all of the matter-connected accessories. Right, And you can filter down with the different types of accessories. So, for example, we were just talking about matter-connected vacuum cleaners, which ones would be on that list, which ones are being certified, all of that, right? Well, this list gives you that gives you that whole breakout. And I was like looking through this here, and just to give you an idea, like okay, the SwitchBot robot robot vacuum K10 Plus Pro combo is on there. The UV robot vacuum Omni S1, which I tested, didn't even know that was you know showing up on this. The S10, uh, also from SwitchBot. There's ones under here from uh, Roborock, Ecovax is on here, Dreamy is on here. There's a good chunk of, of vacuum cleaners, including many ones that we have talked about. The problem is, while this is useful, it's also not useful. Because they may be certified, but it doesn't mean those updates are out. And we have no idea when they will be out. Like for, for Roborock in particular... Roborock has had this certification since like April or something, I, whatever it was. It was very early, and yet we still don't have that update out on the robotic vacuum cleaner itself. Why? I don't know what the holdup is. They literally were certified so long ago, and that update isn't out. So that's what makes this very hard to be able to... So it, 327 is when this was certified. The Roborock S8 Max V Ultra the one that I have that I use, I would love to be able to use Matter with this. And it says it is cer fully certified here, but that update is not available. Who knows if it will be? I don't know. That's the, that's the problem with this. So this is really cool. I'm going to put the link to it if you guys want to look through all of the other ones that are listed here. The only one that I don't know is from a company called Medea, M-I-D-E-A, and they have a J15. I'm not going to, you know, Google it live on the air right now. But that's basically the only one on this list that, I, that I'm that i not familiar with. The rest is Dreamy, Roborock, uh, Eufy, SwitchBot. And then that, that Medea group is the only other one that I don't know. So we've talked about a lot of these. So I'm very curious at when this is actually going to turn into something we can all use. So we'll see. But again, thank you for sending over that list on matter devices because that's what we're going to be talking about for basically the rest of this episode so let's dive in because matter 1.4 has been announced and this is another big update they are sticking with that biannual cadence so two updates coming out a year we had 1.3 coming out in the spring and now we have 1.4 which i believe is technically a little later than last year because 1.2 came out i want to say late October. So we're, we're like a week or so behind where we were last year, but I very much applaud them for keeping these updates coming. 
and I'm, I'm not going to go off the rails complaining the fact that very few companies are supporting them yet. But let's talk about what is new in Matter 1.4, because it is massive. So, first up, new device category for home routers and access points. Huge right there. Routers and access points. So this is going to be anything you use. So mesh routers, all of those can now be Matter certified. And it means a couple different things. So first, it means they're going to play nice with any of your Matter accessories. So really easy to onboard them, really easy to add them uh, to your house. You shouldn't have weird things going on with 2.4 versus 5 gigahertz networks, anything like that. These should just be able to play nice together, super easy to be able to get them onto your home network. Also, it means that they're going to have whatever implementations on the matter side of things. Like when we look at HomeKit routers, there's additional security things that you can turn on and off. So I, I anticipate we'll see something like that for matter enabled routers. They do say they're going to continue to, to work on this, but I don't know what else they're going to be adding to the new router stuff there. But uh, so that'll be there. They also say that uh, matter routers will also have thread capabilities built in. So I think that's going to be a requirement from what I understand. So if that's the case, they should act as thread border routers and, uh, you put one of these in your home It's going to expand that thread network. Like that's, that's exactly what we want. If you're, you know, if you're looking for a matter router, I feel like that's something that you're going to want in your home for just to cover Wi-Fi, thread, make it very easy. So everything's going to work. If you don't have a home pod, you don't have to worry about it. You don't have an Apple TV. Don't got to worry about it. You can just boom, connect this, go. You've got your border router. So all good stuff there for routers. They, again, they say the HRAP, so home routers and access points, roadmap will continue to add enhancements to improve smart home infrastructure, including support of Thread 1.4, which is coming. The Thread 1.4 update uh, coinciding, un unrelated, just happenstance. Okay, multi-admin. They're calling this enhanced multi-admin. Multi-admin has been around for a while, and that is what allows you to use one matter accessory across multiple home ecosystems. So for me, I have like a, a Google Home Hub display, Nest Home, Google Max display, Maxi display, whatever. I don't know what it is, but we have that, and that's on the Google side of things. I also have a Samsung a Smart Hub thing going on, so a Smart Things Hub, and then we've got Apple HomeKit, Apple Home stuff. So three different ones. So if I have something like the Nanoleaf light strip, which is in my son's room, I can go ahead and turn that on, connect it to Apple Home first. I can put it into pairing mode and then go ahead and connect it to the other ecosystems. That's how it has worked now, but it's had some hiccups. It has not always worked that great. There's been a lot of frustration here from users as well as from developers on the actual implementation of these things. It has not been easy. What they're going to do now is with enhanced multi-admin, it's going to require single user consent, which means when you set it up, you can automatically add it to three different ecosystems all at the same time. Very easy to do to add to everything at once. Now, I'm not sure how that's going to work from a, a GUI point of view, like what the user interface is going to look like. You're adding it to Apple Home. Maybe it'll be a pop-up like, oh, do you also want to add to your SmartThings home in this home at the same time? I don't I don't know because that that isn't 100% clear yet, but they do say they will be publishing additional documents and, and blogs on, on how that will all work. So I'm interested to see how that's going to improve, but this has been one of the biggest sticking points for Matter Accessories is doing that. So I'm very curious at how that's going to play out, but it's great news. Then there's a big push on energy management. We have heard this. We have heard this from the CSA in the past, and now we're starting to see some of those first things here. So we already got, and I think 1.3, things like EV chargers. Now we're having a bunch more. So this is all under the auspices of energy management stuff. Solar power. So existing power in electric energy support and matter has been extended to solar power devices, including inverters, individual and panel arrays, and hybrid solar battery systems. So a lot of stuff there for solar from capturing it as well as storing that energy. Moves over to batteries. So these are battery walls, storage units, battery energy storage systems, BESS. Uh, those are in there. Uh, anything that's capable of discharging energy back to the grid, that is possible. Um, creating virtual power plants, that's in here. Um, they also say it will include support. Uh, they'll support load balancing with any controller potentially serving as the management system. 
This is getting complicated, folks, but I'm pretty excited to see. This is what I'm looking for. Solar, battery backup, and managing all that stuff, that gets to be powerful. Heat pumps, these are very popular these days. I continuously hear about them. So heat pumps are being added with Matter 1.4. Water heaters, water heaters are supported here. I'm very excited by this. I like with a regular, we have a regular water heater now, and you never know how much water you have left, how long you have left, anything like that. Also, being able to like control it and adjust your set temperature right now, it's a very manual process. It'd be cool to be able to do something like that from the Apple Home app. So, here's how uh, the CSA describes water heaters. Electric water heaters, they can be set to a preset temperature or percentage. Uh, users can monitor hot water levels. There's a boost command that can be added, which will enable rapid heating from multiple energy sources for situations where hot water is needed quickly. Um, temporary overrides for heating schedules. Uh, cool, yeah. And then scheduling on and off, so maybe you don't have to have it heating all the time. You could heat during off hours based on grid and power utilization all that kind of stuff. So really neat things there for water heaters and then enhancements to EV chargers. So now they're adding support for scheduling charge. So you can actually do this during certain times, uh, building on from what they had before. So scheduling, I think is the big thing for EV chargers from what we had before. Thermostats, new options here. So clusters add support for scheduling in preset modes vacation, home, away, all that stuff will now be supported through Matter. So if we have a thermostat like Ecobee right now, it has those things and then you don't really use them so much in the home app. There's no real way to set those modes. Now you can. Uh, they can also be triggered through things like motion detection and integrate with other devices uh, and automations based on calendar events. So Pretty exciting stuff there for thermostats. That's definitely a boost. Lastly, in matter 1.4 is device energy management and mode. Basically what this means, so devices that are allow, like energy consuming devices. So whatever you have, like a power out or anything like that, uh, you're able to adjust start times based on en energy usage forecast and power management needs. So if you're really trying to nail down based on energy usage, on solar cells, anything like that, you can control when these things are turning on and off. So if you have things like a smart switch that can build into this, it can kind of control those things. So I think all that's very good. Um, other random things in Matter 1.4, there are two new device types. These are for in-wall home devices that control power. So apparently before 1.4, these were all modeled just as lights. But if you had something that would control like an in-ceiling fan, or maybe you had one that controlled uh, like a rotating fan versus a, like a bathroom fan, anything like that, they would all be modeled as lights. So now there's two different device types that gives you a little bit more flexibility in controlling and, and powering these. There's new enhancements for occupancy settings. So they're adding radar, vision, and ambient sensing technologies. Also... I'm very excited for this one, guys. Customizable sensitivity. Apple Home doesn't have this. If you have a device that does motion sensing and you want to control sensitivity, you often have to get kicked over to the manufacturer app and you can do it there, but you can't do it through the native app. So now you can with Matter 1.4. Uh, then battery powered devices. This is a big one as well. So anything that is Matter that is a switch has as better battery life now. So they call them intermittently connected devices and a long idle time protocol. So between these two different changes, we're gonna see switches, buttons, uh, sensors, all with much better battery life going forward. I'm really excited for things like the NanoLeaf remote. I knew you know, that was something that they were working on was how that was gonna work with Matter and I feel like this is gonna be big for devices like that. So here we are, that's, that's Matter 1.4. Tons of new device types, routers, a bunch of energy management stuff, improvements for thermostats. Uh, there's, there's solar, there's a better battery, multi-admin is now much better than it was, lots of things. The real things that we don't have answers to is when we're gonna see any of this, right? That's the big question because we have to wait for the people like Apple, Amazon, Samsung, Google to all add this to their devices. I don't think we're going to see much right now. We're looking probably, in my opinion, a year or so away from these to start to be used because it's kind of like the gate start now. Like now it is announced. Now companies can officially start building it in. The ones that are part, you know, member organizations, they've had some time to play around with it. 
But we're going to still be months away from any device being announced, let alone being available. And if it doesn't count the platforms themselves being ready, we're still, I believe, waiting on Apple to support Matter 1.2 officially one way or the other. So who knows how long before Matter 1.4 is adopted. Probably going to be a bit, but I think this is all great stuff to see for Matter. I'm very excited for this to be released. So that's it. That is it for the episode. I, I thought we were going to have a lot more time to talk about the Matter stuff because, and I told you we were going to be teasing a future guest on the podcast, there was the whole, everything was happening over in Europe this week for Matter, which is why schedules were hard to, to align properly, but I'm confident we're going to make it work. So Tobin Richardson, the CEO of the Connectivity Standards Alliance, will be joining the podcast to talk about Matter 1.4 answer my questions and all of yours. So that's the good thing about this getting pushed a little bit. If you guys have questions that you want answered on Matter, let me know. Write me in. You can write me at Andrew at AppleInsider.com over on Twitter at Andrew underscore OSU. But drop me a line if you have questions about Matter 1.4, Matter 1.3. Existing things now because we are two years into this Matter thing with Apple Home and everybody else. So I know you guys have questions. Let me hear them because I will ask them. Make sure you guys stay tuned for that. It's going to be a few great episodes here as we round up the year. A few other special guests that will be joining the episodes uh, in the future that I'm also very excited for. So stay tuned. Send in your questions. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in this week. Leave the podcast 5, 10, 100 star review on your podcast player of choice. If you want to watch the video version of this, you can go to youtube.com slash HomeKit Insider. It's not a great video this week because I look awful. I'm sorry. I, I kept taking pauses to sneeze repeatedly. I am definitely getting sick. Side story as we wrap. The, the, the Vitals app on my Apple Watch actually alerted me. It's like, hey, by the way, your temperature was high last night. Also, you were breathing more last night. Like, what's going on? You, you might be getting sick. And I felt fine this morning, but by this evening, I have been toast. So I do not feel great at all. So I appreciate everybody hanging in there with me. And if you look at the video, you're like, man, he looks rough. That's why. But thank you, you eagle-eyed viewer. Uh, otherwise, we'll catch all you guys in the next episode. We'll see you.